Okay, so just to finish up this bit about the um, vowels, uh, we've really been focusing on the monop on monophthong vowels, meaning there's just one vowel target. Okay. Um, except when I can't really avoid doing the central vowels without a schwa like on glide. Um, so it really just felt one vowel target. Um, but in the world's languages, there are things you can do to this basic vowel space to um, beef it up, so to speak. Um, the first thing you can do is produce um, diphthongs like we have in English, okay? So like in my dialect of English, we have a as in say, okay? Plenty of diphthongs you can have, um, I as in my, okay? Um, so just combining two vowel targets into one vowel sound, okay? This is really the Germanic languages go, go over the top when it comes to diphthongs, um, but other languages will use, you know, a couple of diphthongs, all right? Um, if, you know, just to, to beef out their vowel inventory, their phoneme inventory. Um, the other thing that languages can do is they can add length. And um, in my dialect of uh, Australian English, um, we, we use length a lot. Um, so for instance, um, the vowel a, uh, uh, the cent low central vowel, low central vowel, um, uh, we might have a word like um, but, okay. Um, and we have a, a long version of the same vowel, Bart, um, as in the boy's name, okay? Uh, so that's uh, a, adding vowel length is a very, very common way for languages to beef up their vowel inventory. Many, many languages will do that, okay? Um, so it's, it's really easy. Um, uh, um, uh, what else can languages do? They can add um, nasalization on their vowels. So um, we've been assuming oral vowels, um, but uh, it's possible to have a, a vowel where the air is flowing through the oral cavity, but at the same time flowing through the nasal cavity. All right. Um, French is a, a language that likes to do this a lot. Um, um, so, you know, you, you could have a vowel like a uh, and uh, put your hand here, ah, uh, and then you can add nasalization. We'll use that tilde on top. Uh, so you should feel a uh, nice warm air coming out of your nose, and that's because you've lowered your um, velopharyngeal port. Oh, do you realize, you know, I realize all this time I've been drawing, oh, is that terrible? I should have had, for oral vowels, that was a nasal vowel drawing there, for oral vowels I should have had my velopharyngeal port sealed. Okay, so um, that wasn't very good of me. <laughs> there we go. So that's an oral vowel there and what I had before was a nasal vowel because the velopharyngeal port is lowered and um, the air is flowing through. So, you know, many languages in South America will do similar sorts of things. It's, it's not an unusual thing to have vowel nasalization. Okay. Um, so there are other things languages can do. They're probably the most common ones. You can have secondary articulations on vowels, but um, it, it ends up getting quite complicated and you, you sort of start wondering, is it really part of the vowel or is it part of the consonant? So um, I won't go into those here. So I just wanted to say that so you know that we're really dealing with I ideal monophthong vowel targets here. Alrighty, well, that's the main bit of vowels done then. Thanks a lot.